there is currently a random man outside delivering a package. I was just about to start filming, literally just hit record, and I see a white van pull into my driveway. He's leaving, I think we're okay. Just aggressively close the door, okay. Is he, yeah, yeah, leaving, leaving, and gone. Okay, that scared me a little bit, but we're okay. That is the least of our worries because I have some fun news. This is gonna be great. So, hi, if you don't already know me, my name is Lauren, I'm 17 years old. I live on Vancouver Island and I am a little bit of a unicorn. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but I've always prided myself on being unique and I don't know, my body just agrees because it hits me with whatever this is. I'm about to share some exciting and terrifying news. I wrote up a bit of a um, script for this one because I need something in front of me to keep me on track. As you can already tell, when I currently do not have a script, my brain is fog, it's numb, I just, it's not working. So we're just gonna go for it before I just ramble on for the rest of eternity. Because that's something I might just end up doing. So, I am living with something that most people, doctors included, have never heard of. Something that's changed my life in ways that I never could have expected, and it's called bag three p209l yeah not even kidding that's what this thing is called bag three specifically p029l i'll go into detail and into depth on what this is in another video but the thing is it's very rare so there's not a lot that people know about it yet besides just kind of the basics so it might not be a very long video <laughs> that one this one we'll see we don't know yet because lauren rambles for eternity so we don't know how long this is going to be so it took years of uncertainty to get this diagnosis at first doctors and me like i'm the one that initially was like hey i think i have cmt and the doctors were like hey yeah this fits we think you have this too so we initially thought i had charcot mary tooth disease because a lot of the symptoms lined up to what it actually is that I have. Like the symptoms are quite similar and I do feel like a lot of people who were not genetically diagnosed with CNT, not a lot of people, like a few, a handful here and there, might actually have some kind of bag three just because it's like possible kind of thing. It's what happened to me, so maybe it happened to you if you have CMT and you weren't actually properly diagnosed with it genetically. Maybe look into some genetic testing to see if it's not something else. Because, you know, it could be scarier than CMT. Just, you know, putting that out there. So, for a while, CMT seemed to fit. Always had trouble with flexibility. Was a toe walker as a kid, and my balance was never great. I was diagnosed with scoliosis at 11. Uh, but it wasn't really followed up with during COVID because, you know, the medical system was kind of struggling a lot and this little kid with scoliosis that was definitely going to increase throughout her early teens wasn't really a priority and I can see how that's kind of... Like, nope. Do not make excuses. Do not say it's okay. Caught myself there. It's not a good thing that that happened but I can kind of see where they're coming from where they were a little bit stressed out but still not great that it kind of got forgotten about so my scoliosis got a lot worse so thanks for that <laughs> uh, but then new symptoms started showing up like later in my not later in my teens I think I was like 14 when things started to kind of look a little bit more funky uh, my seemingly fine, high-arched feet morphed into what I like to call now raptor talons. I'm not going to show you guys my feet because that's a little bit um, funky, but just... But like foot form. So, raptor talons. Uh, <laughs> my muscles, especially in my neck, shoulders, and hips, began to weaken. I started having trouble walking, 
running, even just standing for a long period of time. And la 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 la, when I was around 14 years old, I got orthotics in my shoes. And uh, spring 2025 got the scariest news yet. I have not, well, I think I did publicly show this. I just kind of randomly blurted it out on that news interview thing I did, but I don't think it's really known about yet. But I did actually end up getting diagnosed with a restrictive cardiomyopathy uh, spring 2025, so this year. That was terrifying. Like, hey, Lauren, you know, you've got some problems, but they're in your extremities, so worst case scenario, wheelchair, but you'll live. And I'm like, okay, well, that genuinely sucks, but, you know, I'll live. And then they're like, no, now there's something wrong with your heart, too. And I'm like, well, swear word implant there. Just imagine it's there, because that's, don't feel like swearing on camera, because I'm nice. That was not fun. <laughs> uh sitting in the hospital for like hours and then they just sent me home without really telling me anything besides um we noticed something a little bit funky so we're gonna send you to someone who will learn more and then we did learn more and it was bad because you know when there's something genuinely going on with you like wrong you do all these tests like i've been doing blood work for years and all these different tests for years and they kept coming back negative where like nothing new was being found. So we go to this doctor to look into heart stuff. And I was thinking that was gonna happen again. Like, oh, we go to the doctor, it's probably fine. You know, I was just having a bit of like a chest pain that day. Like it's like it's fine. And then they're like, nope, you have a restrictive cardiomyopathy and I haven't seen one this bad in someone your age in like ever. Usually we see this in people that are like 50 to 60 plus. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm not that. I'm 17, sir, so this is great. <laughs> uh, serious heart condition, not great. Um, when the genetic tests that we sent off the beginning of the summer this year, we had to actually send them off to Finland because they don't do the testing in Canada. Yay! <laughs> uh, when the testing came back, confirmed that I have bag 3 P209L mutation. We literally got that information back like a week ago, so it's still processing and it's not fully processed yet. <laughs> uh, about a week ago, finally made sense, but it was also hard to hear. This isn't just a rare condition, it's ultra rare. As in only 20 something people have ever been diagnosed. So, not a lot is known about it, and I have no idea what this is going to look like for me. It's not like, oh, well, this is really bad, but we know it's not life-threatening. We don't know that. We have genuinely no idea what this is going to look like for me going forward, which is kind of comforting because it's not a definite death sentence, but it's also not not that for lack of better words. So we'll see how it goes. Yay. Um, as it, and well, yeah, it's obviously also progressive. Yay. I live with an axonal neuropathy, muscle loss, shortness of breath, fatigue, brain fog, among the other things that I listed earlier. Uh, wear orthotics to walk, can't run or jump anymore, which genuinely scares me. And I'm 17 years old, but in a lot of ways, I feel like I'm less physically able than my grandparents. So because of the lack of physical mobility, I'm just going to dive a little bit into this in this video. We are genuinely considering me getting a service dog, like a mobility service dog to aid with like balance. And if I drop things on the ground, I cannot pick them up. So that would be great to have, you know, a doggo following me around to help me with that. And also, I'm a smaller young woman and I kind of want to be able to walk in public without like like knowing that I won't get attacked because you know that's not really something that you can just know for certain but the thing is I can't run so the small chance that other women have where like someone's like Rah, let me attack you they can just kind of run away or try to or I just 
no, it's over for me immediately. And that is genuinely terrifying. One of my biggest fears about all of this is that. So if I have this big, scary looking dog, that's not actually scary. It would probably actually be super sweet, but don't mess with it. Don't do it. To just kind of like scare people away or add that bit of intimidation. So people are less likely to approach me or if they do so, the dog can kind of, you know, teach them a lesson or run off and get help. That would be great. Also be great. So we'll see where that goes. Um, like, yeah. So anyways, <laughs> none of this is easy to say out loud, admitting that this is what my life looks like as a teenager. But hey, I'm still fighting. For over a year now, I've been working with a physical trainer. Shout out to my bestie, Sandra. <laughs> Twice a week, every week. And despite what this condition is doing to my body, that training has helped me not only retain muscle, but actually gain some strength. Like, I'm a little bit ripped now, guys. I'm genuinely, like, bodybuilder here. Yes, definitely. <laughs> it's been a huge part of how I'm still moving, standing, and showing up for life. Honestly, without Sandra and those, like, you know, training sessions, I don't know where I would be right now. If I would still be walking, probably, but not as well. So thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Genuinely, because she's one of the best people ever, and I'm so grateful to have her in my life. Sandra, if you're watching this, thank you. I feel like I don't say that enough. Okay. Um, even though I'm scared, because I am, if you can't tell, I'm kind of like shaking as I'm recording this. This is genuinely terrifying. Um, even though I'm scared, because I am, I've made a decision. I'm not going to let this define my life in a negative way. I've chosen to take all of this, the pain, the frustration, <laughs> the uncertainty, and use all of it as fuel to find purpose. There are so many people like me out there. Like, so many. Like, people living with rare diseases, people who are misdiagnosed, misunderstood, or just trying to get through the day in a body that does not work properly. Or, like, the way it should. And, like, I want to help them. <laughs> I want to help make those indivisible... Indi invisible feeling individuals. Got it. I want to help those people. I hate everything. I got lost. Just give me a moment. Give me a moment. I want to help make those invisible struggles visible. I want to turn this into something meaningful, not just for me, but for others too. My grade 12 year, because I'm going into grade 12, yay, almost done. <laughs> it won't look like anyone else's uh, because I'll be needing to take fewer classes, most of them probably either electives or TAing. Not that I need more credits, I could technically graduate now, I just need to get out of the house still. <laughs> um, but I'll be traveling a lot to other countries. It's windy, give me a moment. This is what I get for choosing to film outside today. This is what I get. So I'll likely be traveling to specialists in other countries, saying as pretty much nobody in Canada can really offer us anything besides a diagnosis, which I already have. So it looks like I'll be needing to go to Australia, Germany, the States, and wherever else <laughs> to find more information. And I'll likely end up being like in a lot of test stuff, like a test subject, but not in like a creepy lab right way in a I'm volunteering to do this for science kind of way. So a lot of that in the next couple years, I'm assuming. So there's a lot of uncertainty ahead, but also a lot of hope. Uh, because strength isn't just about what your muscles can do. It's about showing up when things are hard, about finding the light in the dark places, and it's about deciding to keep going even when the path is completely unknown. So here I am, living rare, living brave, one awkward step, <laughs> one shaky breath, and one uncertain day at a time. Thank you. If you sat through all of this, you are seriously a saint among people. Because, you know, 
We had to sit through a lot of my rambling, so thank you for that. I hope you learned something. And we'll continue to learn things, because I'm going to be continuing to post things about rare disabilities and my own and all these fun things. So if you found this somewhat bearable, <laughs> maybe stick around. Okay. Bye.